Hey everyone, I got some more water heating designs and tests coming soon. I'm still waiting on a few parts, so that's given me time to do some mods on the rocket stove that I've been really anxious to get to. I was already happy with the design and the dimensions, and I was easily getting 1800 degrees in the back, but I had some ideas for some mods that I thought could get it even hotter, and then also add a forging element so that I can heat and forge steel with it. The mods turned out really well, I got the temperatures to jump up by a lot, and the forging conversion also worked. So I'll jump right in, show you how I did it, and show you the test results. And in case you missed it, I'll link the video down below where I first built the rocket stove. Just a reminder, likes, subscribes, and comments really help out. And if you want to directly help the channel and keep the content coming, you can do that over on Patreon. All right, let's get going. What I'm going to do is add a secondary air supply back here in the, at the end of the combustion chamber. So I'll be adding more oxygen here, and hopefully I can get that burn to be a little bit cleaner, reduce the soot a bit, and boost the temperatures just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is run some sections of pipe and I'll have them end right about here and come all the way through through the feed chamber and they'll pop out here at the end. So it'll be sucking in air from here. It'll be running through the burn chamber, preheating while it's going in and then the pipe is just open at the end here adding the oxygen to the burn right there at the back. The other mod I'm gonna add is to try to turn this into a forge so that I can use this for forging steel. And there's a few benefits that come with that if I can get the design to work right. It opens up another fuel avenue. So there's propane, coal, and charcoal. This would open up wood as a viable forging source for me. And that can be done a lot more cleanly than fuels like coal and propane. It can be done cheaper. It can be carbon neutral in theory. The fuel can be a lot more localized and people can source their own. So I'll add the secondary air supply first, then I can fire it up, take some temperature measurements at different points in the chamber, find out where the hottest point of the burn is and focus at that area for the forging modification. I'll start by marking out the inside so that the two pipes run right along each side on the bottom corners and so that I know where to drill through on this side to run that pipe through and have it settle right in that corner. So it's a bit of guesswork, but if I can get close enough, then it should work. Okay, so these fit in well. They're a good size. They're not taking up much of the primary airflow space, and I've left about two inches extending out. That way I could either add caps or a butterfly valve to further control the air. For now, I'm just gonna run them open and see how it works. So I'll get these welded in and fire it up. Six minutes and we're at 1,000, 1,100. So we've got about 1,300 at both of these. Nine minutes in, we're at 1800 here. So once it's come up to temp, we're definitely getting additional heat with the additional oxygen supply. Yeah, we're about 400 degrees Fahrenheit higher here than here. So I'm getting the highest temperatures about this point here. It's still cool enough to touch. It's hot, it's hot but it's still cool enough to touch. I'm getting about 1800 degrees in here, 1700 degrees in here, and I can get 1700 there too. So I think I'll go ahead and add the forging element here. One thing I'll mention is that basically feeding it with the kindling type wood, the temperatures do tend to vary quite a bit. So I think something like a pellet hopper would actually add to the stability of the system. So I might go ahead and build an add-on here that's just a pellet hopper and see if I can get more stable temperatures. But I'll go ahead and add the forging mod here now. Um, so I'm just gonna let the system cool down and then I'll be able to get it back in the shop and show you how I do that. The first thing I'll do is measure this hole from the bottom and the back so that I can put a matching hole on this side that is right in line with each other and passes through to both sides. Then I'll drill the hole on the back side and I'll pull off these legs. Next I'll pull the outer skin and the insulation off the top half of the riser so that I can get at the actual rocket stove underneath. And I'm gonna drill a hole roughly similar to the inner diameter of the pipe I'll be using, both through the outer skin and the actual rocket stove. So then I'll have a hole in this case, a little bit over an inch that passes through the entire thing on both sides.
First I'll use the mag drill to drill the holes in the rocket stove. Then I'll weld the threaded pipe over the holes. Now I'll trace out matching holes on the outer shell. And I'll just cut those out with tin snips. Here I'll cut the insulation to go around the pipes. And then I'll put everything back together. Last, I'll just cap off the new pipes. While I still have this in the shop, I'm gonna add one more mod to try to get a little bit more heat out of it. So I'm gonna add an air supply here in the front. The idea being that I'm increasing the amount of air flowing through the system and thereby getting a hotter fire. A lot of the capacity for air to flow through the system is gonna be obstructed by the fuel here. And I'm hoping that by adding an air passage in the front, I might be able to boost that. It'll also probably change the flow dynamics. So instead of the air coming in from the top and swooping in here, which keeps the fire mostly at the front here, I'm hoping that I can build the fire further back and get a larger fire in the burn chamber. I'd also be able to cap this off and restrict the flow coming in from the top and play with that and see how it changes the temperatures. I'm basically just gonna cut a hole in the front and weld this little piece of channel on. So this channel will help keep the fuel inside the feed chamber. And I can also add some sort of valve here on the front if I want to restrict this down the line. So I'll get this added on, do another test fire to check the temperatures. And when it's really up to heat, I'll see what happens when I try to forge with it. All right, time for another test and try out the forge. About 30 seconds in, we're already about 1200 degrees right here and 1000 degrees right here. Okay, we're hovering around 1950. So I'm gonna go for the forge. We're at 2000 degrees. just hit 2100 degrees we're really cooking starting to get red okay so that got nice and hot 2100 degrees here at the back definitely into forging temperatures it is a greedy little thing it's really eating the fuel up and you'd have to do a lot of fire maintenance if you were actually forging a pellet hopper could solve that if you just had an automatic feed you could set your temperature and just cruise away, but it would chew through pellets quite fast. But the test also showed that both of these mods definitely helped increase the temperatures, peaking up at about 2100 degrees, so really hot. And if you have an application that can use that much heat all at once, this thing would be a great basis for a design. Okay, so these mods worked out really well. The extra oxygen at the back definitely helped, and then just adding the air supply up here was awesome. I was easily averaging 2,050 degrees in the back, up from 1,800 before, and I was peaking just above 2,100 degrees. So this thing was screaming hot, and these mods made a huge difference. The forging conversion does have some limitations, but it did work, and it opens up a whole new fuel source, and it would need some tweaking and experimenting to get it really dialed in. But for simple twists or tapers or punching holes, it could work really well. And I just drew a simple taper just as a proof of concept. It definitely gets the metal hot enough. And so that's something I'd like to explore more in the future. But overall, I really like this design. It's definitely the basis of something to build upon and to continue to tweak and improve. At some point, I'll build a pellet hopper add-on with an automatic feed up here. But if you have any other ideas for mods I could add to this, let me know and I'll see if I can get them done. I'll be back with the water heating series and a bunch more springtime videos coming soon. Thanks for watching. Take care.